In this lecture, we're going to see how we can download and install Qt and Qt Creator on our system. The first thing I want to be clear is that this course was recorded with uh, an older version of Qt. I used Qt 5.10 and Qt 5.11, and I am going to show you how to install a newer version of Qt, and it is going to work fine with the code for the course, so you should have no problem using it. And if you face any problem as you go through the course, don't hesitate to ping me in the QA section of the course, and I am going to do the best I can to help you out. We are going to see how we can install Qt and Qt Creator on Windows and Linux. And I have to say, I don't own a Mac device, so I can't really show you that. But I am going to do a written tutorial on how to do that. And you should have no problem if you have watched the videos on Windows and Linux. And by the way, I do recommend watching all these installed videos because it's going to give you beginning experience with working with Qt on all these platforms. Qt is cross-platform and you would be missing a lot if you only used it on one platform. This video is going to be about Windows and we are going to do another one specifically for Linux. So let's go to the Qt website and see how we can get started. Okay, here we are on the Qt website. The link is here, you can check it out if you want. The first thing you wanna do is hit this download button. This website may change in the future, but the general flow should be really the same. And again, if you face a problem, don't hesitate to tell me and I will do the best I can to help you out. So hit the download button here. We are going to land on this page. Scroll down until you see download for open source users. Qt has different licenses you can use it under, but this course is going to use the open source version of Qt, so that's why we go here. Click on the Go Open Source button. We're going to come here, Open Source Qt Use. We're going to scroll down again until we find the button we are really looking for. It is the one here, Download the Qt Online Installer. We're going to click it, and we are going to land on this page here which says that they have detected the operating system as Windows. They recommend using the online installer for Windows, but you can click here to view the other options. You can see we have one for Mac, one for Windows, and two for Linux. We are on Windows, so we're going to click on Qt online installer for Windows, and our download should start in a minute. Okay, your download should start and you should download this somewhere on your drive. If I hit start download, it's going to start downloading. Don't worry about this window here. It is a piece of software I have to help managing my downloads, but you should be able to do a regular browser download if you want that. So hit download and it's going to start downloading. I am going to cancel out of this because I already have Qt downloaded. I am going to bring up the location where my Qt download is. You see, it is the one here, Qt Unified Windows x86 322 Online. I'm going to click on this to start my install. And it's going to bring up this window here. Wait for it to finish whatever it is doing. We're going to hit Next. And on this window, we are required to have a Qt account. If you don't have a Qt account, you can sign up and create one. And once your account is created, you can put your email and password in here and you should be able to hit next. Let's do that. It's going to log us in. Okay, we are logged in. We're going to accept the license here. You can read this if you want. We're going to hit next. And we're going to hit next again. It's going to download a few things it needs. Okay, it is getting the information right now. We're just going to wait for it to finish. This may be slow or fast, depending on the speed of your internet connection. Okay, it looks like it is done. It's going to bring us to this page here, and we can choose to send information to the Qt company or not. I am going to disable this. You can enable this if you want. We're going to hit next, and we're going to say where we want to install Qt. I already have Qt installed in this location here, but you should choose the default if you don't have Qt installed. In this case, you should choose CQt like you see here. But as I said, I have Qt installed and I don't want to disturb my installation, so I am going to put in uh, the Qt 
test folder here and I'm going to hit next and we're going to see this window where we can choose what we want to install if you want you can uh, use these filters here but we're not going to do that because the latest releases that we want are already checked So we're going to choose the latest version, which is Qt 5.14.2 right now. We're going to expand this and we're going to select the things that we need from it. I want you to check the MinGW components here, 32-bit and 64-bit. These are going to give you the compiler and everything you really need to run your Qt applications on Windows. But since we are on Windows, if you have Visual Studio installed, you may be able to use the kits for MSVC here. So you can also check them out if you want, but it's going to increase your download size. So this is a choice you need to make. And you should be able to use MinGW without a problem. So choose MSVC here if you want. And I want you to go down and check Android because this is also going to allow you to compile your Qt applications for mobile. Let's go down and see if there is anything else we need. I like to use Qt charts, but you can leave this if you want. You basically have to choose whatever you need to use because this is going to download these things from the internet. So it's going to take a lot of time if you choose a lot of things you don't need. Let's go down and expand developer and designer tools here. We have a few things pre-selected for us. We're going to leave this as the default. And by now we should have everything we need to start installing Qt on our system. So make sure you have everything you need here before you hit next and hit next. We're going to be given this window here to accept the license again, hit next, hit next again, and we are ready to start installing. If we hit install, it's going to start installing Qt in the location we chose earlier. I already have Qt installed as I said before so I am going to cancel out of this and I am going to close this. When the installation is done you should see a window like this and you should hit finish and Qt Creator should start if you checked this checkbox. If it is unchecked you're going to have to start Qt Creator manually. So I am going to suppose that you now have Qt installed. We're going to try and start it. So we're going to search for Qt and it should give us Qt Creator here. Let's open it by clicking on this icon here. Okay, now we have Qt installed. We want to try it and make sure it is working as it should. We're going to create our first QML application. So hit file new and you're going to get to this window here we want to go to the bottom we want to go in the center here and choose q2 quick application empty this is going to create an empty qml application we're going to choose this and we're going to give it a name qt quick test this is going to do looks like i already have a project with this name so let's call it qt quick test one we're going to save it somewhere on our drive we're going to hit next choose qmake as our world system hit next choose the qt version hit next again we don't want to do any translation we're going to choose the kit we want to use so we're going to choose mgw 32 bit the reason is because I have had problems with uh, MinGW 64-bit and 32-bit is working fine. So we're going to use this, hit next, and we want to hit finish for our project to be generated. What you see here in the editor is what QML code looks like. I want to stress that you don't need to understand any of this right now. We are playing with our environment and we're going to have a lot of chances to learn about all of these things as we move forward in the course. We can build the project and look at the compile output to see it in the process of being built. The build is successful as you see here. Hit the green button to run your QML application. 
and it should pop up in the center here and uh, this is what we have this is uh, our QML application that is powered by the code you see here so this concludes our process of installing Qt and Qt Creator on our Windows system. We were successful. Congratulations, you got it right. We're going to stop here in this lecture.